Thomas, you're back. You've returned to the chilly Minnesota spring after competing in the PJ Professional National Championship. Let's break it down. Yeah, so I hit the ball awesome down there. Yeah. I was really happy with my ball striking. Probably the best I've hit in a long time. Putting. Yeah, yeah it purely was, was, was putting. Um, I felt like I hit my lines that I wanted to, but I had a really, really hard time reading the Bermuda green. Mm -hmm. um, and quite simply, that's where it was for me. Sure. I, I played well enough. I really hit the ball well enough to at least finish in the top 20, but ended up missing the cut just due to having 34, 34 putts around. Yeah, and I know that was something leading up to, if you've been following the series, I know that was something that you was, was on your mind and you wanted to get some work in. You were, you know, did the putter fitting. You were talking about, um, you know, the number of putts you wanted to bring down. I know you have a goal for the year actually to bring that down uh, below, I believe 30 it is. Yep. So, uh, and clearly that's still, it's, it's a different surface down there, right? The, the type of grass is very different than you play up here. So I think, you know, getting accustomed to that probably takes a little more than a couple practice rounds for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's hard coming from the north. I think if you look at all the guys from the north, we only maybe had one round on the grass up in yeah. Minnesota here before we actually played yeah. down down there. The best player from the Minnesota section, uh, Jeff Sorensen, he spends the winter down in uh, in Florida. So that kind, of, that kind of explains <laughs> a lot of things. So preparation for next year for me, for sure, I'm going to have to figure out a way to make sure that I get on grass earlier mm -hmm. because this spring really hurt my chances. Sure. Well, yeah. let's not dwell too much on the negatives because, I mean, obviously the results not what you're looking for, but uh, there's a lot of positives to take away, it seems like, from kind of the way you're you're carrying yourself after the performance. Uh, and it sounds like basically tee to green, you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, to, have, to shoot 75, 72 with 34 putts around. Yeah. It's pretty pretty good. Uh, I mean, under the circumstances of, of not playing much golf in the last few months, um, I was very very happy. Actually, I was extremely happy while I was driving the ball. I'm hitting the ball really good right now. Still, uh, iron play was was great. Wedge play was good. I'm, I'm very happy with that part of the game. And I think being able to work in the off season on, on the barn on the full swing has is, is, is been great for that. But it's just different when it comes to putting on artificial turf versus actually putting on grainy grass yeah. or even just grass alone. Right. I mean, yeah. that, and I mean, like you said, even reading the green is completely different from up here versus, you know, at Bermuda yep. down south. And I did also want to mention some TV time that you were able to get on Golf Channel. I know prior to uh, the tournament and one of the videos of the series, you mentioned that there was going to be some broadcasted hours on Golf Channel. Thomas made his way into the broadcast with uh, an eagle putt. Well, Eagle putt that didn't go in. Kind of, it kind of encapsulated the whole week for you. It honestly. was. Yeah, yeah. That was actually the first round. That was actually my only birdie of the day. A two putt from about eight feet. <laughs> it, it hurt. It really did. Um, yeah, uh, but I had a great shot there. It was drivable par four. Actually, I think it was like playing like two sixty five, two seventy. I hit my utility driving iron. I ended up yeah. keeping that one in the bag. Nice. Uh, in, in the end, and I smoked smoked that really really closely. And actually, the second round, I drove a three hundred sixty five yard par four. Okay. Um, to the back edge of the green, a two part of that one is, as well. So my birdies kind of came when I really bull striking was on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that, that has to be a positive then though, too, for you, because I mean, you look, I, I think maybe the viewers can relate more to this, where you look on like PJ Tour, for example, and you see the players that do the best week to week or the players that, you know, make their way up the FedEx Cup standings are the ball strikers of the, of the group, right? The players yep. that maybe they don't putt extremely well week to week, but when they get hot with a putter, that's when they make noise and they have that T degree game consistent every week. So that seems to be where you fall uh, relative to, you know, your competition in Minnesota and also at the club, the club pro championship. So that has to be a positive moving forward that that trend seems to favor you. Yeah. I mean, uh, my, my good rounds are the rounds when I have the 30 putts or, or less, and yeah. that's when I get those 65s in, in there. And then a lot of my rounds around 70, 71 of those rounds when I have 34 putts. Yeah. Um, and, and as I mentioned, it's not so much that I'm, I feel like I'm putting bad. I'm just not getting the ball started on what I perceive to be the right line. Right. It's just been a hard time reading greens for me. And it's probably definitely one of my, my weaknesses in my game. And actually, I'm, I've actually committed to hiring a caddy, a lo, uh, the guy that actually has, he's got some experience. He's you know, caddied on the European tour for a few okay. years. Um, in the Minnesota majors this year. Okay. Um, so that's going to be great to have a, a second opinion, or at least you know someone that, that knows what he knows what he's doing. Sure. And that I think that's going to really benefit my my game and trying to win the Minnesota Player of the Year. 
Yeah, so let's talk about what's next now, because, I mean, you're not stopping. You know, sure, you didn't make the PGA Championship this year, but yep. there are still ways to, you know, achieve that goal that can be accomplished through means this summer with yep. different events competing for, for example, U.S. Open qualifying, uh, for example, maybe a spot in the 3M Open. So let's talk about what the summer slate is. You talked about it, you already hired a caddy. So uh, what's that going to look like for you? Yeah, so next week I, I actually do have the U.S. Open local qualifying. So that is the 12th of, uh, of May. So okay. regarding when this video goes up, mm -hmm. 12th of May is my U.S. Open uh, local sure. qualifying. Um, so I'm excited for, for that part. I mean, there's also a, a sectional qualifier after that. I've made it to that a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I've actually almost got through there a couple of times there too. Um, so I'm excited for U.S. Open qualifying. Um, I've also got the Minnesota, I mentioned, Player of the Year. Um, the, in the Minnesota section, as a PGA member, if you're the player of the year, you get an exemption into 3M Open. So PGA Tour events in my home city would be great to play in. Mm -hmm. And in 2021, I actually did win that based on the point system. But because I was only elected Class A in August, all my points before that were void. So I actually didn't end up, couldn't, I couldn't win yeah. because I wasn't officially a Class A member to August. But it's nice to know that, hey, I got a great opportunity there. So. I have the Minnesota PJ match play coming up, um, and then I've got a whole bunch of uh, events that kind of go towards the points, and the point okay. system's gonna be big for me. All right, so there's, a, you know, this was maybe uh, an early peak of the season for competition-wise, but there's a ton of meaningful golf left for you, and it looks like you, you, like you got the plan in place, you know what you need to work on based on your results down south, and you got a caddy to help you out as well. Uh, so things are looking up still for you, despite maybe not the result you wanted, and I think the viewers will be very intrigued by how things go the rest of the summer. So we'll keep the series going. We'll track your results. We'll see what you're working on. Uh, and, you know, we'll just kind of see what comes up in your game. And we'll have the viewers uh, an inside look at, you know, what Thomas Campbell's working on, the goals he's looking for and trying to achieve and how he's getting there. Yeah, the road to the PGA Championship definitely is not over. Yeah. It's, it's disappointing that I didn't get there this year. I mean, first first year rounds. Uh, maybe a little bit of nerves, mm -hmm. just not quite maybe ready for the fact that I was not on grass enough. Right. Um, so I have the Minnesota qualifying in August again. Okay. So that'll be a big one, big event for me to make sure I finish in the top eight so I can then get back down to the nationals and then perform the way I want to perform. Well, sure. Well, Thomas, thanks again for taking us on this journey. I know a minor setback for major comeback, right? So uh, we'll be following you again all summer. And viewers, thank you for following the series. If you haven't yet, check out the rest of the videos on the Road to the PGA series. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more in this series to come.